Murderbot Diaries number two, Artificial Condition. Oh, I love this book so much. And I think I loved it even better on the reread. One of the things I love about this book is its kind of inciting incident and how that ties into a larger theme and exploration of ideas. Because Murderbot has run away from its human friends and gone on its own quest to find itself, I guess. And what was the impetus for this break from its friends? Murderbot said it had to leave because they knew about its hacked governor module and might, I don't know, tattle on it or something. But I think what it really comes down to is one of the moments when Murderbot decided to leave one of the elements in it was that it wasn't going to be needed on preservation. Preservation is a very peaceful place, they don't need security units, and Murderbot wants a purpose. In this book, Murderbot and Art have a kind of a conversation about purposes, where Art is very satisfied with its purpose as a research transport, all good. But Murderbot says it's not satisfied with its purpose of being a security unit. But I think at the heart of it, Murderbot does enjoy being a security unit. It enjoys protecting people and being the head of the security team. But what it doesn't enjoy is the social perception of sec units, how everyone's afraid of them. And then at the same time, everyone abuses them and doesn't trust their opinions. So as Murderbot goes on this quest to figure out more about its past, it also kind of inadvertently picks up people to protect and becomes so dedicated to this. Because part of being a person and being satisfied as a person is having a purpose, is having something to do that you're proud of. And I think Murderbot finally admitting this to itself, that it kind of enjoys protecting people and wants to be good at it, is also part of it accepting that it deserves to have a purpose and not just sit around watching media all day. Because being a human and what it means to be a human and if Murderbot wants to be a person is another thing that this book wonderfully wrestles with. Because Murderbot wants to blend in with humanity so it doesn't get targeted as a rogue sec unit and destroyed, but also it doesn't want to be a human. When it's time for Murderbot to get physical modifications to look more like a human, it admits to itself that it doesn't want these because it would make it harder for it to pretend not to be a person. Is Murderbot a person? Yes, it's a sentient being with human-level intelligence and human-level autonomy. Does it want to accept that humanity, that personhood? And at its core, a little bit, no. Because nearly all of Murderbot's interactions with humans have been negative. So it doesn't want to identify as a person, it would rather identify as a sec unit, as a bot, because those things aren't stupid, aren't evil, aren't all the things that it's seen humans do. But one of the real linchpins of Murderbot really being reluctant to accept its own personhood, I think, is tied up with its identity as a rogue sec unit of does it deserve its freedom. Because that is the question at the root of this incredibly thoughtful novella. Murderbot has a dark past where it went off the rails and killed a bunch of humans. But because of various memory wipes that happened after this event, Murderbot is unsure if this going off the rails happened because of some human interference or if in the past Murderbot hacked its own governor module in order to kill a bunch of humans and then after the memory wipes just rehacked it. Because if Murderbot originally hacked its governor module in order to kill a bunch of people, does it deserve its freedom that it's gained? And I think that's really the question that it's wrestling with, and part of why it continuously rejects the identity of a rogue sec unit, even though that is what it is. Because it associates rogue sec units with going on killing sprees, and it says, that's not me, that's not me. Because if it is Murderbot, can Murderbot really accept that it deserves its own freedom if this is how it's used it? Though at the end of that quest, Murderbot doesn't have all the closure that it was looking for. It has gained enough closure, I think, to make a really fascinating decision here at the end of the book. And this decision is tied in with the fact of do construct these sentient cyborg robot things deserve freedom? Do they deserve freedom even if they've done bad things? Do they deserve freedom even if they want to do bad things? Do they deserve freedom even if they don't have a purpose, even if they're kind of pointless and not contributing to society? And maybe at the beginning of these adventures, Murderbot would have thought kind of not because the things that it took pride in was, but I still kind of deserve this freedom because I'm using my freedom to do my job well. I'm using my freedom to help people. And I'm not a dangerous sec unit that's hurting people. But at the very end of the book, Murderbot has been interacting with this sex bot owned by the villains of the story. And Murderbot knows that this other unit 
has some homicidal desires and tendencies already, that it has expressed genuine interest in killing the master that was mean to it. And also at the end of the story, its master is dead. There's nothing else for this unit to do. It doesn't have a purpose anymore. And yet, Murderbot still chooses to set it free. By Murderbot's own internal standards of what deserved freedom at the beginning of the book, this is a little counterintuitive, but it just shows how far Murderbot has come over the course of this story in kind of redefining to itself what is deserving of freedom. Yes, Murderbot deserves freedom, but not just because it didn't go on the terrible homicidal rampage, but just because. Because it deserves freedom, because it's a person, because it's coming to terms with that idea that it has inherent worth that isn't tied to anything. This book is a little bit about moving on from things that you can't change. That's one of the mini theses that Murderbot says. I think one of the things that Murderbot has to come to terms with that it can't change is that it's a person with inherent self-worth. And that self-worth isn't tied necessarily to the things that it did in the past, whether they be good or whether they be bad. It just has it because it has it, because it's a person. And by granting that freedom and that worth to this sex bot that at the beginning of the book it didn't really respect at all, it really shows how far its own thinking has come. But one of my favorite parts of this book was just Murderbot's interactions with ART, the research transport. They were such a cute dynamic duo, and I loved reading their interactions. I think my favorite ones were when they were both trying to navigate social situations and kind of tag teaming and explaining things to each other and trying to make it work. Because it shows how overwhelmingly curious art is about social situations and also a little clueless sometimes. And art was just the friend the Murderbot needed here, which was a friend that cared about it, but also was willing to pressure it into talking about its own feelings, which it's kind of bad at. So what do you think about this book? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What other thoughts do you have? Let me know. And if you made it to the end of the video, put a rocket emoji in the comments. And thank you for watching this video.